A little over two years ago now, Tesla announced the refreshed Model S and X. It was the first time these cars truly saw a facelift, and it was a welcomed upgrade. At the time, they also launched their new Plaid powertrain, making the Model S the quickest accelerating production car out there. It took some time for Tesla to finally launch this car for production, and then I purchased mine in September of 2021. I recently sold this car after around 37,000 miles, so today I'm going to give it a final review, detail the good and bad in my experience with it, and why I sold it. Let's get into it, and a special thanks to Masterworks for sponsoring this video. I picked up my Plaid Model S in Carlsbad in September of 2021. Overall, it has been a great car, but I was quite surprised at the issues it actually had. As someone who has now taken delivery of four different Teslas, this one, which was by far the most expensive, actually proved to have the majority of issues. Also worth noting, this car now sells for $25,000 less than what I bought it for. To start off with right off the bat, let's talk about those issues. This is oftentimes the biggest question for people looking to buy a Tesla today, and this car surprised me. At delivery, I noticed one of the handles being sunk into the door further than usual. This is something that happened with older Model S's, but I thought Tesla would have changed. Clearly, they didn't on the refresh. Then certain alignments in the trim were loose. The seats came with wrinkles on the stitching. The trim around the windows somehow just didn't fit properly. And then the big one, there was a dent in the front bumper. The car was this way at delivery in Carlsbad, and they actually noted this for me, which was lucky. It was a newer car at the time though, so I had to schedule a service appointment to have this bumper replaced later. Within the first couple weeks, some residue from the window trim was sticking to the windows and ripped off part of my window tint. After that, the right mirror on the car started unfolding past its normal position and wouldn't snap back into place unless I did so manually. Those were all issues I talked about previously, but since then there were a couple more that have been fixed with service appointments, or Tesla has said that are within spec. My yoke needed replacing because it ended up peeling really badly. I think it has something to do with the shape of the yoke, and if it gets nicked a tiny bit in a corner, that keeps spreading. Tesla replaced this under warranty. Then my center console drawer lost its function. It's supposed to slide and lock into three different positions. Either it's all the way open, halfway open, or fully closed. Instead, mine started locking in at about a quarter of the way closed and then fully closed. No halfway or fully open was available to me. Tesla replaced this entire center console under warranty. Another thing I noticed in this car in particular that I don't experience with other Teslas is when it rained heavily, the doors would actually retain water. Here's my door when I opened it up the day after some rain. I didn't follow up with service about this since it doesn't really enter the car, but it's definitely odd. The big one for me though that Tesla couldn't fix is creaking coming from somewhere on the passenger side. When I turn at lower speeds, a very obvious creaking was coming from the passenger side suspension or other system. Tesla looked into this twice and said everything was fine, but this definitely made more noise than it should have. Here is what it sounds like. According to Tesla service, this is a common sound on all years of Model S regardless of spec. So after those two service appointments, I just had to live with this sound. On a $130,000 vehicle, it's definitely not something that excites me each time I hear it. The rear seats themselves also had various rattles and creaks throughout ownership. So did my main driver's seat. It was actually bad enough that Tesla replaced the entire seat under warranty. So I had the yoke, center console, side mirror, front bumper, and front seat all replaced under warranty at a variety of service appointments in the last two years on this $130,000 Tesla. All of those rattles went through various stages of popping up, disappearing right before a service appointment, and then coming back. Then occasionally my front trunk wouldn't unlatch properly, so I'd have to close it and reopen it to have it fully unlatch again. Interestingly, while this car has a better infotainment setup than Tesla's other cars, I found it took the longest to start up when entering the car. Oftentimes, if I walked up to the car the first time for the day, the screen would be black and the backup shifter buttons on the base of the wireless charger would light up. Then the screen would come up about five to 10 seconds later. I also had a few other bugs like an offline downloaded album and title. When I tapped it, the entire system would crash. I'd be driving, try to pull up an album, and then bam, black screen and test the logo. Then I try to play the album again and same thing, just a continuous cycle there if I want to play that specific album. It wouldn't happen with other albums, so it was very odd, but I also couldn't delete that album because each time I tapped it, the entire thing reset. 
Another thing this car has is a feature to automatically shift out of park. This is an automatic feature to ideally replace some necessary shifting since they removed a stock and you shift by swiping on screen. This functionality though, like many Tesla features that try to replace something in software, doesn't work very well. Here's an example of what can happen quite often. I get ready to drive and it tells me it's going to shift into reverse automatically when I press the brake. Behind me is a curb and some bushes, so you really have to pay attention to the graphic on the instrument cluster display and never try trust what the car guesses, which kind of defeats the purpose of the whole thing. Even after the rally to start 2023, Tesla stock and the overall market are down a lot in the past year, all while we're seeing signs of inflation in our daily purchases. Typical investments haven't been holding up like they have in the past. The real estate market is in flux and crypto has been having a lot of troubles too. On top of that, some experts are still predicting the entire S&P 500 to drop another 20% this year. Even if you could put that money away for the future, inflation is making it extremely difficult. It's getting even harder to set yourself up for the future, but there are always ways to work through it. In the last year, the prices of one luxury asset appreciated on average 29% at auctions, according to Barron's. That asset is fine art. Now you can invest in shares of museum-grade contemporary art from legendary names like Picasso, Banksy, and Monet in minutes for a fraction of the cost thanks to Masterworks. Masterworks paid out over $25 million in total to their investors last year, and it wasn't a one-off. Every Masterworks exit to date has returned a profit to investors. When looking at their performance, the results truly speak for themselves. With nearly 700,000 plus users, Masterworks offerings have sold out in minutes. They even had to make a wait list for new users, but with my link in the description below, you can get special access today. Check it out. As far as build quality and fit and finish for this car, I was actually pretty surprised at how poor it was. My 2021 Model 3 and 2022 Model Y have far better build quality than this and have not seen nearly this many issues. I think it's in large part because while Tesla charges a lot for these cars and they deliver a lot of great features, their true focus is the Model 3 and Y. They sell and build far more of those cars each quarter by about 20 times, so there is much more improvement happening there. For the Model S and X, not so much. These are still upgraded versions of Tesla's legacy cars, and I can see why they are having to really push incentives to sell them more as of late. If someone were to ask me if they should buy a Model 3 or Y, or a Model S or X, and money was no object, I'd probably recommend the 3 or Y. From what I've seen in my experience and the experience of many other owners, the S and X are just not Tesla's priority, and they feel like it in this regard. That said, the Model S delivers a lot of great stuff, and I truly love this car. If it weren't for those issues, it would probably be my favorite Tesla. There is nothing like the experience of driving this car, utilizing utilizing its insane plaid acceleration, or just taking it on a road trip. It's incredibly comfortable, the sound system is amazing, the cockpit view is one of my favorites of any car, and there are a lot of great features included with it. First though, let's finish out my complaints, and there are really only two. The first is the ridiculous touch-sensitive horn button on the yoke or steering wheel. For some reason, Tesla got rid of a traditional horn on the yoke, and it's nearly impossible to get used to. Also, good luck perfectly tracking down that little button to press when the wheel is upside down on a turn. The thing that annoys me even further though is that in March of 2022, over a year ago, Elon Musk said, quote, all cars made since November also have push center for horn, just waiting on firmware update. That update? still hasn't arrived. No word on it, even as Tesla has now made the round wheel the default for the Model S. You'll still have to relearn the horn pressing skill, which is only really necessary when you have zero seconds to think and need to prevent an accident. I just think it makes absolutely no sense. This is one example of why you should never buy a Tesla with the promise of a future update. Buy it for the features it delivers today. So if this is a deal breaker for you, you probably shouldn't get this car because it probably won't get updated. I bought this with the horn button, thought that it may be updated, but of course that never came. The same thing happened with AAA gaming. From the launch of this car, Tesla touted its AAA gaming abilities and showed off its ability to play Cyberpunk. At launch, it wasn't actually there, but we expected it to arrive in software. It did eventually arrive through Steam integration in software, but required an infotainment system upgrade that they only began shipping on later Model S's and X's in 2022. So I bought my car expecting this feature as they demoed at the event with my same car. And then when I tried to get a hardware upgrade for that promised feature, Tesla said they'd have to charge a few thousand dollars for that upgrade. Another example there, buy the car for what it delivers today, or you'll likely be disappointed. With all of that aside, this car drives incredibly well. It's also very versatile inside with a lot of cargo space. It's incredibly fun to drive, and launching this car never gets old. It's completely stomach dropping each time and brings joy to the face of anyone you take along for the ride. And I mean anyone. It exists to prove that electric cars can be better in every way possible and really delivers in this aspect. My only complaint though is that certain roller coasters feel a bit slow to me now that I'm used to plaid launches. Come on, Tesla. 
It's so much fun and also super unnecessary, but those looking for this thrill can certainly get it with this car. Today, it's also much cheaper than it used to be, and Tesla has upgraded certain aspects of this car. The brakes are better to better match its acceleration. The glass roof lets in more light while still protecting the same. You can get a round wheel for it, which a lot of people have wanted, and they have a new ultra red paint option that looks pretty cool. They also added a tilting touchscreen after I bought mine, so you can tilt it right or left depending on your needs. That large 17 inch screen coupled with the instrument cluster display is Tesla's best software setup in my opinion. The more features they bring out, the more the Model 3 and Y screens are getting a bit messy, so the Model S's interior is something I'm really going to miss. It also has a number of interior upgrades, like a screen for rear passengers, although function still leaves a lot to be desired there, especially with audio, a wireless phone charger for rear passengers, and ventilated seats. Its larger width also ensures that rear passengers are a little less cramped. All of these little things make the Model S stand out from its cheaper and cheaper feeling siblings. This car still offers plenty to a lot of customers, and is the longest range Tesla you can buy. With with stock wheels like I had, the long range gets a 405 mile range with plaid at 396 miles. On a road trip, this is really nice. I did multiple road trips up to Northern California and back in this car, and there is nothing quite like it. It's a smooth ride. The suspension is automatically adapting to comfort if you want it to be that way. There are ventilated seats, which help immensely in summer. Autopilot works really great, especially on freeways. And Tesla's supercharger network is incredibly quick, reliable, and easy to use. Other cars have a lot of these features, but the supercharger network remains a huge advantage for any Tesla. Then when you get home, you plug into your charger, it's scheduled to charge off peak and you're good to go. The real reason I bought this Model S though was to review it on this channel and rent it out on Turo. I did this for quite some time and had a lot of renters with this car. While I drove this car a lot myself, my Turo renters were the real ones putting the car through 37,000 miles, and it sometimes was great and other times was not. I will say that overall, considering the mileage and situations this car went through, the overall maintenance cost was very low. I would be ready to replace tires soon, but aside from that, I didn't have anything to maintain on this car, which is a huge benefit of electric cars. I did a full video on my Turo experience, and that's linked up here or in the description below, but essentially it wasn't worth it for me anymore. Dealing with Turo renters is a lot, and for the Plaid, my rentals started to drop off at a certain point. I was sitting there with an extra car to manage, and then I'd have to deal with a lot of renter cancellations, car washes, misbehaving renters, and more. So then it was a decision of whether or not to keep this car for myself. The first reason I didn't keep it was because it's expensive. It's very obviously an expensive car with more expensive tires to replace, higher insurance, and more. I could get pretty much the same functionality I'm looking for in a much cheaper Tesla package, since most of the time I'm not actually using the Plaid's full potential. Then I actually prefer the Model Y when it comes to shape and function. The Model S is very large and particularly wide, making it harder to park in certain areas. The Model Y on the other hand has a great balance of function, lots of storage space, and a small package that's easy to navigate in. On top of that, there were all the issues I had in the Model S that we talked about earlier. I felt like I'd be headed to test the service a lot more if I kept this as my personal car, and things like that creaking sound would only get louder with time. Recently, Tesla has been dropping the price on the Plaid rapidly as well, so I figured it was as good of time as any to finally say goodbye to this car. Overall, I made the right choice, but I definitely will miss it. If you're in the market for the Model S, it's likely that there aren't many cars that can beat it. The range is great, the supercharging network is great, and depending on your spec, there are almost no other competing cars that come close to its price. That said, it still feels like Tesla's secondary car, and the build things I mentioned earlier might still be there regardless of the price. If you want to save some money and the upgrades from a Model 3 or Y to an S or X are pretty nominal for you, it likely will make more sense to go for Tesla's more popular cars. There's a reason why they've become more popular and why Tesla is better at building them. This has been my position and is ultimately why I decided to go for a Model Y instead of a Model S for my daily driver. The Plaid Model S is still something incredible, and for quite some time, it will remain the quickest production car on the road. If you haven't checked it out, it's well worth it, because you just can't help but smile when you see how impossibly fast it is, all while being incredibly quiet. I had a great time with this car, and I hope this review and other videos with the car were helpful for you. In the meantime, if you want to see my full review of the Model X Plaid, you can check out that video linked up here or in the description below. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.